Dr. Gradner. Neither am I. Yes, you are. You feminist pig. Welcome to Watch Mojo. And today we're counting down our picks for the top 10 shocking moments on Wife Swap. Jack generalizes everything on male or female. He differentiates everything based on what gender you are, and it sucks. For this list, we'll be looking at the most emotionally charged and outlandish moments from the American version of this show, including the revived series and reboot. What's your favorite moment from Wife Swap? Let us know in the comments. Number 10. Gaming Dependence Since the 1970s, video games have captured the attention of millions of Americans. The Mallory family featured on Wife Swap are no different. While all of the family members have their issues with gaming or spending time on the internet, it's father and husband Andrew who takes the cake. Tell me why you think you're here. Certain people think I have a gaming addiction. He's over on his computer all day. The only time they would communicate is playing their games, screaming at each other. Like most vices, Andrew's fixation has come at the cost of those around him. His habit has resulted in a one-sided partnership with his wife and a lack of parental presence for his 12-year-old son. In a shocking and eye-opening therapy session, Andrew learns how his actions have made his son feel unheard and unseen. Are you hearing what he's saying? He's saying he's lovely. Does that seem like someone who's getting the message that he's loved? The heart-wrenching scene makes for a difficult moment to watch as the emotional boy clearly and desperately wants his father's love and attention. We should spend a little more time together. I felt a little more cared for or loved. Number 9. Chicken Nugget Debacle In the Holland household, little King Curtis rules the roost. King Curtis reigns. He gets his way every single time, and he doesn't even have to break a sweat doing it. As king, he's used to having his every wish fulfilled by his parents, even if that means having no chores or living exclusively off of chicken nuggets. Much to Curtis's dismay, Wife Swap brought Joy Brown into his life. I'm scared of her. She's like the big bad wolf. And with Joy brought changes focused on discipline and healthy dieting, meaning no more chicken nuggets. Well, actually, no more chicken fingers, but you catch our drift. Like anyone else in their right mind, this change was too much for Curtis to handle, leading to one of the most memorable moments in the show's history. Joy, I have been nice to you, but now I'm coming to the edge. There is something bewildering yet entertaining about Curtis's expression of anger, his well-spoken insults, and his attachment to chicken as he packs his tiny suitcase to walk out on Joy. She's gonna try to stop me, but she can't run those little high heels. Never see this face again. Number 8. Dumpster Dive Dining while some may be surprised at the Heise's lavish lifestyle and excessive consumption in season two of Wife Swap, the Kestrel's way of life is much more shocking. All you do is go on and on and on and on and on and on. I don't want to learn all his nonsense. All I want to do is tell him, go get a job, cut your hair, and take a shower. Like most, Susan Heise has a difficult time understanding the Kestrel's lifestyle choices. The family purposefully lives below the poverty line, surviving on an income of only $6,000 a year and dumpster diving for food in an effort to conserve resources. The Kestrel's convenience-free lifestyle is based on the philosophy of saving the world through conservation, including growing and recycling their food. We consider ourselves to be freegans, which is a play on the word vegan, and the implication is that society wastes a whole lot. And that While their intentions are good, some might say that their choices come at the cost of their quality of life or dignity. It's safe to say Susan Heiss would agree with that sentiment. In fact, the experience was so distressing that Susan had a near breakdown when she was asked to beg for scraps to eat. Susan has broken down at the prospect of having to beg for food and Ian takes it upon himself to comfort her. Number 7. Blatant Misogyny It's no wonder that Halani Lobdell felt like she was transported back in the 1940s when she entered the Moon household. We have very traditional roles, and I believe that as a wife, I should support my husband as the head of our household. What? Self-proclaimed man of the house, Jack Moon, believes that a woman's purpose is to serve men and look pretty doing it. While his beliefs alone are belittling to an entire gender, his enforcement of those beliefs are even more insulting. Do yeah. you cook? No. Jack, do you cook? No. 
You can't cook or you don't want to cook. Cooking is for women. Wow, okay. When the two first meet on the show, Jack's first line of questioning is distasteful, immediately evaluating Halani's usefulness to him. We see the same chauvinistic and demeaning attitude towards Halani for the rest of the episode, both in Jack's comments and behavior. I appreciate the fact that you're this strong woman, but think about making some food, okay? Unless you pay some bills around here, you can't come in and tell the Jackster what to do. Tired and frustrated with Jack's archaic way of thinking, Halani came home grateful to be living in the 21st century. Number 6. Casual Mistreatment You wouldn't think that parents would willingly admit to harming their own children on national television, but the Rhymers aren't like other parents. Our instrument of discipline is the whacker. The whacker? which is used for spanking. Spanking. This family practically runs their home like a military regime, maintaining a high standard for their young children that comes with strict discipline. In the Rhymer's introduction, the parents coolly and unabashedly explain that each of their children has a leather whacker that is used to spank them when they get out of line. That is not gonna work. This is more like a military, like um, a military church. While it is completely normal to discipline children, the Rhymers take it to the extreme and come across as very cold. Thankfully, swapped wife, Cindy Bittner, spoke her mind about the whackers and cut the leather belts up much to the joy of the children. There is no more whacker. The whacker's gone. So you won't be threatened with this? We've gotten rid of this. Number five, opposites attract. When the patriotic, gun-toting American, Glenn Smoke, appeared on Wife Swap, he seemingly did so with the intention of forming a closer and more loving relationship with his partner. I hope it brings somebody that I close to. I really do. It would be nice to go back the way we were and be able to sleep in the same bed again. But things seemed to take a turn when Amy Beaver arrived at his home. Despite her advocacy for animal rights and pacifistic nature, Glenn makes a point to comment on her beauty, kiss her several times throughout the episode, and show her off like a trophy. You look nice. Oh, thank you. A lot of the husbands wow, were very jealous of me. Everybody, this is Amy. This is my new wife. It's not exactly the type of behavior you would expect a married man to exhibit. If all of that wasn't enough, Glenn explicitly admits to the cameras that he would like Amy as his partner. I wish I had her as a, a wife, a real wife. Though we are pretty sure those feelings are not mutual. I am so tempted to strangle the hell out of this man. Number four, radical unschooling. Dana and Joe Martin's parenting style and view on education are about as unconventional as you can get. The two believe in radical unschooling, a method of education where children use the world as a tool and learn through life experiences rather than using books or homework. Our family are radical unschoolers. I think schools are like prisons. It's one of the most unjust things to do to institutionalize a kid. I am an advocate in the unschooling movement. Though a nice idea in theory, the Martin's method of schooling, or lack thereof, is concerning to say the least. Their 11-year-old daughter is only just beginning to teach herself how to read, but is still unable to pick up a book to read from. I learn and play when I'm home. Our 11-year-old daughter, Tiffany, has slowly started to teach herself how to read through texting. I can't really read books yet. This makes it difficult to understand the actual benefits or use of unschooling when a child is illiterate at such an age. Though hyperbolic, Cindy Avery Lamb voiced what most of us were thinking during the episode. Your daughter can't even read the word only? What I find You guys are lazy parents. If you please would stop talking. I'm not gonna stop because you're asking me. You haven't gave me no respect. Wow. This is sounding really disrespectful. Yeah, wow my ass. You suck. Number three, drama queen. They say beauty is in the eye of the beholder. To the Gustaferro family, beauty is all that matters. From 11 months old, the Gustaferos have raised their daughter, Alicia, to participate in beauty pageants. I don't care what other people say, appearance is everything in this world. This is a dynamite picture. It blows the judges away. I do feel sorry for people that are not 
gorgeous people. While the practice itself is controversial, the behavior displayed by Alicia's parents is even more troubling. While the family spoils Alicia with Christmas presents year-round and completes schoolwork for the teenager, the values instilled in their impressionable daughter may be disturbing to some. Alicia, who usually has her parents do her homework, has to do a school project herself. Just make a note you'll want to check your spelling of America. I would be very concerned. She's not able to write complete sentences. She lacks basic spelling skills. It was hard for it. Both parents place utmost importance on physical appearance, especially when it comes to Alicia. Mr. Gustafaro, in particular, makes several unsavory comments in relation to his daughter's looks and even helps to keep up her appearances. Ralph's not used to anybody, particularly a woman standing up to him. I'm not surprised. I mean, that Ralph immediately went to intimidating behavior. To say his involvement in Alicia's physical looks is uncomfortable to watch would be an understatement. Number 2. Raw Food Diet Kim Hess Webb is a quintessential urban mother whose prime focus remains on education and cleanliness. Little did she know that she was in for one of the most shocking experiences of her life when she lived with the Hague Woods. This is what Barb would eat. Yeah, and it, you know what? Actually, it, smell, it smells really good, uh -huh. but I just can't. I can't do it, and I don't want to risk my health." This family of farmers unschools their children, brushes their teeth with butter, and consumes an all-raw food diet. That means vegetables, eggs, and yes, even raw meat. Can you show me one instance where this is not good for them? I haven't done the research. I have! And you wouldn't know because you won't try. The entire family aggressively defends their choices as healthy, boasting miraculous benefits from their diet such as hair regrowth. But we'll let you decide if that worked for Mr. Hagwood or not. Nevertheless, viewers and Kim can't help but cringe every time the Hagwoods bite into a piece of uncooked meat. I'm fed up with Kim, so we're going back on the raw diet. My kids are going to be healthy. It's what we do. In addition to wondering how they have survived this long. Before we continue, be sure to subscribe to our channel and ring the bell to get notified about our latest videos. You have the option to be notified for occasional videos or all of them. If you're on your phone, make sure you go into your settings and switch on notifications. Number 1. Mommy Issues Let's face it, we've all been stuck at jobs we weren't the biggest fan of. Samantha Myers would have to agree. However, Sam enjoys her role as a high-level executive and, instead, likens her job as a mother of four to negative work. Taking care of kids, it's a thankless job and it's negative work. You only realize it when it's not done. While there's no denying motherhood is not for everyone, Sam's callous attitude towards her children throughout the episode is uncomfortable to watch, especially when the Myers children are so well aware of her views. My mother is, um, cold and callous. Our kids raise themselves. I've been raised to be self-sufficient, and I think I'd freak out if someone tried to do everything for me. Let's get your jammies on. Drew's in college. He steps in as a parent for Tom. I'll keep him around as long as he's an asset here. Sam's daughter even reveals that she has questioned her mother on why she has had so many children. The response was awkward and distasteful at best. In an episode full of several emotional high points, the most shocking moment was the emotional vacancy between Sam and her children. I've gotten more involved in the children's activities and spending more time with them. My mother has learned to be a little bit more in touch with her emotions. She's learned to care a little bit more. The Mallory family featured on Wipe Swap. The Mallory family featured on Wife Swap are no different. 